Hi, my name is Claudia Rubenstein. I'm an artist and this is my home. The house was built in 1896. My house is full of all my memories, my treasures, my experiences, my creations. It's always changing and I sometimes think if I look at all the things I've created in my life, they, they have a story. They can't just be set down like, you know, sort of soldiers lined up in a row. They have to interact with each other and, and tell the story. I love miniature worlds, little animals in anthropomorphic states. As a little girl playing with dolls, I created worlds for the dolls, um, for example, I would make a table setting and use toothpaste lids as the drinking cups and stems from the garden as the landscaping. A lot of my inspiration has come from the stories that I heard when I was a young child. And then as the years progressed and I saw more picture books and more stories and was introduced to different artists, this was all part of the influence. And drawing my little worlds, I was very strongly influenced by nature. Going into the forest when we were growing up, we lived on an acreage in Canada. And we would go to the back where there was a swamp with frogs and tadpoles. And then we'd go into the woods where there would be birch trees and mosses growing and lichens and bracket mushrooms on the side of the of the tree and then I would just imagine these to be little worlds. I did paint my first oil painting at age 13 and I had a lot of fun doing it and I've never stopped. This is my painting room. Lots and lots of paintings. <laughs> a whole box of paintings, a whole cupboard of paintings, paintings on the wall. One that's gone on a very funny angle and needs to be straightened up again. And of course there's some jellyfish lamps. One of the many jellyfish lamps in the house, there are several just basically the love of creating and the more I've spent time creating the faster I've become and one piece has just followed another. We're about to go into the guest room and we've got Marie Antoinette, the parrot from our Indian travels and the Taj Mahal, the bird rider fairy, a bee and some Canadian foliage inspired by the group of seven in Canada. I took a painting that I had done and had it made into a mural. So when you're lying in bed and look up, you have the, the forest behind you, you have the forest in front of you. And through the window you have an atrium with a couple of little seated chairs. And it's a space for private conversation. This is the linen press with the wallpaper on the doors and I just think that looks like something out of the Sultan's Palace. It's so beautiful met a new friend who came in and they said by the time they came to the kitchen they'd counted 200 pieces of art and that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are books full of watercolors, uh, pieces hanging in homes of family friends, pieces that have sold watercolor paintings and acrylic paintings. I also love to make poems to go with my paintings. Sloella Snail was a spectacularly slow snail seriously and supremely slow, and that is exactly how she liked it. These ladybirds have come to dine in their local garden, and aphids on the menu tempt, but what's that, beg your pardon? A spider who is in disguise with a ladybird sash on his top hat. This interloper's favorite dish is ladybird and low fat. But the bugs have already seen him, and quickly they move away. Spider will not sample them. Perhaps another day? I also like to work with beads and that is anything from making a necklace to a beaded lampshade to a character by using the beads in a mosaic fashion. I work with polymer clay. Polymer clay comes as a solid color and also as a translucent color. So the translucent color really lends itself to making lamps. I've made jellyfish lamps and a variety of large glass jars covered in the polymer which gives you the effect of a stained glass lamp with beautiful colors. This is a little teapot. I did a teapot making class with Danny at the Whimsical Bead and Heels for many years ago and just kept going with teapots. So I have maritime teapots and nautical teapots and this teapot is a teapot card. I think having a vivid imagination and acting on it is a very addictive thing and it has its own pleasure and it can be very 
intoxicating and very absorbing. The other day I had to have an MRI and while I was in the machine, I was asked continuously, are you okay, are you okay? I was absolutely fine. I was off in a painting that I was creating and thinking about that I would do when I get home. And it was, you know, always a little bit of an interruption when the machine stopped because I was so content there. I think the imagination is very powerful. You talk about manifesting things in your life. If you dream it and think it and practice it, it occurs. And uh, I'm very grateful that I have been given one or been gifted with one and, and, and use it in my life. I feel very fortunate. Thank you.